Welcome to Clocking In, Voices of NC Manufacturing. I'm your host, Phil Mintz, Director of the North Carolina Manufacturing Extension Partnership, otherwise known as NCMEP. My role is to drive outreach to NC manufacturers, build relationships to federal and state leaders, and coordinate efforts to drive profitable manufacturing growth in North Carolina. Throughout my time working closely with manufacturers, I have heard the most quirky, curious, and memorable stories. I wanted to turn these stories into a podcast so that others may hear and be informed and inspired. From humble beginnings to manufacturing titans, from tragedy to triumph, I will be interviewing some of these manufacturers who have made North Carolina manufacturing the powerhouse that it is today. We find ourselves clocking in right in the middle of our state today. Lee County is where the city of Sanford, North Carolina is located. Once named the brick capital of the USA due to its substantial brick manufacturing presence, Sanford is now experiencing a strong influx of diversified industries, including our spotlight manufacturer today. Dr. Matthew Cashin is president of Cashin Fishing Rods, a high performance product that can actually be seen in the professional fishing tournaments all across the country. Cash and Fishing Rods is an American-made fishing rod manufacturer founded in 2009 with the mission to deliver quality rods that ensure both strength and sensitivity. I'm happy to be speaking with Dr. Cashin, who is the owner of Cash and Fishing Rods. Matt, thank you for taking time to speak with us today. How are you doing? I am doing terrific, Phil. What an absolutely terrific opportunity and really appreciate y'all coming down here today. Looking forward to our conversation and talk a little bit more about what Sanford has to offer and then also what Cash and Rods uh, has going on as well. Yeah. Well, man, I remember sometime long ago when I was a boy fishing with my parents and how much pride I had when I got my first rod and reel, as we called it. Uh, one look at a cash and fishing rod, and I just say, wow, the detail and the workmanship. Tell us what we are seeing in a cash and fishing rod product here in Sanford and what goes into it. Yeah, well, the first thing we want you to see is that that, that wow factor. Like, hey, this looks different than everything else that's on the shelf, and, and we go into that with our branding we have a special branding on the grips, a yellow and a black material, and we want it to stand out and look different. But really, the, the biggest difference in a cash and fishing rod, you can't see with the eye. It's at the molecular level. And that's where we really focus are the material aspects. And our value proposition is that we offer, I guess, uh, novel materials and functionalized materials at the molecular level when you're building a fishing rod from the ground up. So that's where we start is at the molecular level, and then we build it up from there. So to the untrained eye, you're not necessarily going to see the difference, but, man, we hope that you can feel the difference. Yeah, that's great. Well, you know, you didn't just stumble into this great product, and although I think you told me that you had some time spent working out of your garage, but talk a little bit about your educational journey and how you developed your expertise in this high-tech structure of your product. So undergraduate, went to East Carolina and was in the chemistry department there and just thoroughly enjoyed it. Enjoyed the challenge of it. I enjoyed the understanding because you're building on on a building blocks there of how the world works. And I enjoyed the practical application of chemistry also. So in undergraduate school figured out, all right, I better go into graduate school so I can just dive a little bit more into this and get a little bit deeper. So then actually went out to the University of Texas at Austin and was working for Richard Legault out there and his research group in the chemistry department. Unfortunately, Richard came down with an illness, form of Alzheimer's, and it just kind of was apparent I needed to, that wasn't going to be the place. So I graduated with a master's there, but then I transferred to Virginia Tech. In uh, Virginia Tech, I was in their chemistry department, but concentration in polymer chemistry. And Virginia Tech has a very good uh, polymer chemistry macromolecules institute and Phil, I flourished. I, I don't mean to brag, and I apologize for bragging, mm-hmm. but it was just my wheelhouse. I was, uh, I just absolutely loved it because you're solving problems that nobody else has solved, and that's the challenge. There's a lot of challenge in that, and I think there's a lot of challenge that correlates to fishing also, where you're going out and you're trying to read the fish and figure out what's going on. But in graduate school, I was working on epoxies, and that's kind of where my background was in was working on epoxies 
And so graduated in 09 from Virginia Tech, been in school my whole life, have a PhD. You know, I'm, I'm feeling pretty good, but feel I could not find a job. Wow. It was just not the time to look for a job. If those of you that remember the economic environment in 2009, it was just, it wasn't good. Mm -hmm. So uh, you talk about one mad individual. I was a mad individual at that time and just questioning everything. Uh, but luckily had a great support network. My wife uh, had a great job in Morrisville. And so we know we wanted to live in this area and, and stick around close. And so, you know, not finding an opportunity after graduating really freed up my time that I could really start exploring my passions and my interests. And I could just had some ideas in graduate school for how the epoxies I was making could work with carbon fiber and, and was learning more about carbon fiber prepregs. And lo and behold, that's all a fishing rod blank is made out of. It's carbon fiber and epoxies. And uh, so cash and rods really started at the molecular level. We said, wow, this would actually make a good fishing rod starting from the materials. It wasn't starting and saying, I want to get in the fishing industry. How do I do that? So we're building it from the materials level up. We're not going to go out and out-brand and out-market anybody. We're going out hoping our product can sell itself because we're starting at that, that molecular level of building it up. And it's all about the materials. It's all about the performance and the product. So, Matt, you, now you have this great product that you made uh, with all of this technical background from what you've learned. And so how do you get it out there? I mean, how do you promote and market this great fishing rod product from zero? It was absolutely from zero. Nobody had ever heard of, of cashing for sure. And, Phil, I'll start off by saying I always say this is the hardest thing is growing a brand. I will never do this again in growing a brand from zero to at least where maybe somebody has heard of it. And we have a very long way to go, but at least we're a whole lot further than where we were. Marketing and branding has been the hardest part. You know, my background is very technical. I enjoy getting in the back and mixing epoxies and playing with the materials. The marketing and branding has, has absolutely been the hardest thing. So, you know, it all starts from your mission statement understanding who you are as a company, you look at your vision statement, where you want to go, your value proposition, and then we're going to grow it from there and understand who we need to partner with. So we've been able to get it in some professionals' hands, and we've had a lot of professionals come on board that enjoy using our product, that can easily talk about our product and promote it. Uh, we just recently had one of our professional anglers win two Bassmaster Elite series events this year which you know they're on the cover of the biggest bass fishing magazines in the country uh his name is jamie hartman and he just recently won another one this past weekend so you know he's got a, a cash and rods wrapped boat and it's on the cover of all these websites and magazines and so he's talking about our product and and all these opportunities and of course People like me, we enjoy following the professionals because these guys do it for a living. So we take what they say and, and we adapt it and try to apply what we're learning from them. So the professional route has been a good one, and it's finding the right people, like anything. It is finding the right relationships. Uh, we do some TV, some national TV marketing. Uh, we've actually been able to partner with, it's called Fishing University, and they are actually partnering and coming to Sanford at the end of November to film a show in Sanford. And this, again, will broadcast on the World Fishing Network, Outdoor Channel, through all their, their national media. But talking about Sanford and the resource that we have here with Jordan Lake and Sharon Harris and just the great opportunities for the outdoors. And we'll also be able to highlight cash and rods and the new uh, products that we have coming out. And they'll come to the, our facility and film the, the manufacturing aspect of it. So that's a great partnership, and I really appreciate Sanford working with us on that. Other avenues, of course, are social media and website. You know, our website sales just continue to go up, and that's something that we need to pay attention to and making sure that we're putting good blogs and good content out there. It's easy for our customers to find products. And, you know, outside of that, with all of the research that we have and all the marketing campaigns, still over 70% of people make their purchasing choice based on a personal recommendation. 
So they're still getting feedback from somebody that they trust and know that's telling them, hey, I got a cash and rod. You know, you want to check this out. So that's why in our mission statement, we strive to have the highest customer service in the industry. We want to take care of our customers because they matter. I mean, those are, number one, our revenue source, but two, also our marketing department. Because if they have a good experience with cash and with our product, customer service, they're out there talking about it, spreading the word. So that has been our biggest form is grassroots. Definitely the grassroots effort has been absolutely huge in helping promote cash and rods. Matt, we noticed that uh, you have your dad pictured with you on your, in your website. And did your father inspire some of this work around fishing? He absolutely did. So he has been a huge supporter. And he graduated from NC State Mechanical Engineering. I guess he would have he would have graduated around seventy two is when he would have graduated. And so he's he's been an engineer uh, his whole life, and it was in the textiles industry. Then went on to some uh, narrow fabrics industries, and so he has a very mechanical mind. Um, and he's always been employed, but he's always kind of pushed me towards self-employment and entrepreneurism because you know there's there's a lot of advantages in working for a big company there's a lot of advantages in teamwork and understanding but that comes with there's a trade-off with that as well and with his mindset and mine too we just have a very you know we enjoy the opportunity to to go out and search and do what we enjoy to do and where directions that we want to go in And he kind of felt constrained through his career. And and he was really, really inspirational to me and motivating to help me kind of steer towards, you know, creating my own thing. So he actually, when when things weren't working out for me in 09 and finding a job, he gave me a $2,000 loan to kind of just get up, just start somewhere and, you know, grew it from there. So he's very thankful for that opportunity. But more than that, his problem solving for cash and rods, and, I'll, I, and it's at the right rate, which is free, has been absolutely phenomenal. He's actually coming up tomorrow. We're having an issue with an OEM. we got a huge opportunity for a big OEM contract, and we're having some issues with the painting process and nailing that down. Well, he's coming up tomorrow to help me problem solve and for just give me some support and somebody to bounce ideas off wow. of. And he probably does that once a week. Wow. Where we'll, we'll dedicate some time. So... His help, I, I, I just, I, I love him to death, think the world of him, but we would not be where we are without my dad, Joe Cash, and, and just love him and, and really respect him and appreciate everything he's done. Great. I also know that your faith has an important role in how you lead your business and interact with your staff. What do you draw from your faith that helps you with, the, with your business? Yes, absolutely. So from the beginning, I really feel like, this was being God's plan and direction. In 09, you know, it just happened that I happened to graduate in 09. I happened to graduate at a time when I couldn't find a job. I couldn't go off and and try to pursue these other avenues. And it just kind of has all fallen into place. Now, you know, it hasn't been on my timing. Of course, I want everything. I want us to be a $50 million company tomorrow. and, And it just hasn't grown, but it's grown very controlled method. We've had great growth, but it's grown very controlled where we can keep up with it. And the opportunity as a business owner and a leader in my company and and, and hopefully within the fishing community is I get to share my faith. So when I first started, you know, I was questioning God's plan. I was questioning everything in 09 because nothing was working out. How could this be? But then now looking back, of course, you kind of see everything falling into place like there was somebody with a greater hand that was kind of directing this. Uh, I see some of your efforts to become more vertical in your production, maybe working all all the way back to some of your most basic materials. Talk about the vision of your production manufacturing arena and how you're going to advance that. Yes, so great. So we are staying true. Our our mission is American-made. We are American-made, and we are staying true to that. And what we want to do is we want to become a global leader. So right now, the overall fishing rod market at the wholesale level is around $2 billion. 
Well, only a hundred million of that is made domestically here in the U.S. So everything else is made internationally. Right now, we are working on strategies and it's highly involved with the aerospace industry, working with companies here in North Carolina, some research facilities, which we are looking at that next generation of material. Mm -hmm. So the evolution of fishing rods, it started with bamboo. Then it went to fiberglass. Then it went to carbon fiber, and that's where we are now with a carbon fiber prepreg. Well, we think we have that next generation of material where in 10 years, every fishing rod is going to be made from this material, and we are going to be able to bring the production back here because we're going to be able to make it more efficiently where we can p compete on a global market. And, you know, cash and rods can become that global leader in fishing rod manufacturing. That's our, that's our goal. That is our vision. And it's, it's, a, it's a big one. Wow. Um, we understand that. But we want the U.S. and cash and rods specifically to be the leader. And it's going to be done through the materials. The yeah. materials and technology are what are going to allow that to happen. That's quite amazing. All right, so tell me when you'll complete this new design that I can just reach out across the water and the fish will just jump on the boat. <laughs> Are you working on that? It, it, Phil, it's so funny how God works because I could be the worst fisherman. Like, it's funny how that works. You know, I know how to, how to make a good fishing rod from the molecular level, but I'm not good. So if I could design that, I would in a heartbeat because, <laughs> buddy, I love to fish. I absolutely love it. But I'm just not very good. I don't. I don't know why. How that yeah. worked. I, you know. I think it just proves that God has a, a real good sense of humor. Yeah, that was what I was going to ask you. Finally, you know, do you get much time to even use a catch and fishing rod with all this growth and this business you're doing? It has definitely diminished. So we're very blessed. Uh, three kids at home. My wife and I. She is a preschool director at our church and the children's minister at our church. That so we're heavily involved in our church. You know, three kids, just life just yeah. gets busy. So I absolutely fished a lot more. But now when I do go, like I'm scheduled to go actually on Monday of next week, it, but I get to go and it's product testing. Like, you know, I'm working on those materials and I'm going out there and figuring out. So it's not necessarily figuring out the fish. You know, we're not going out there just to go fishing. Uh, there's always an ulterior motive behind it. But I still, you know, I'll get to fish with the first cash and rod that it's probably going to be our next series that we launch early next year we're, we're kind of putting the final touches on that so that that part is exciting i do love it getting to go yeah that's great yeah thank you for that and we'll we'll go out and talk to a couple of people in your plant so matt we're in your production facility now and uh, we're going to get a chance to see kind of what you do back here and making your fisher eyes and maybe speak to a couple of people who are helping you out yeah, great. You know, these are the guys who make this possible, and they do such a great job of the quality that absolutely love the opportunity to get them to share their experience. Yeah, so we really have two divisions, and this is the first division. This is the blank manufacturing. So this is where our blanks are made, and then they'll move in the downfield in the rod assembly where the grips and the guides and everything is put on. But this is where it all starts. So this is where we're starting with our carbon fiber prepreg that's functionalized with our epoxies, and then we're rolling that process over a mandrel, and then we're baking that in our oven, and then it comes out as a hard composite part of a unidirectional carbon fiber. So here we are. We've got some, some machines that are specialized for what we do. But the more uh, important thing are the people. The people are what matter the most. Yeah. Tell us about what you do here at Cash and Fishing Rods and how you got involved in this, this work. I started here in April. Never knew this process. Never been in this field. But I have worked in production and factories. I first started... And then found out how fishing rods were made. So basically we take the carbon fiber and, you know, mold it onto a mandrel, roll it on this table right here. And then over here on this station, we wrap it with some cellar wrap. Right, this, this one right here is wrapped in cellar wrap all the way down. And then we put it in the oven and bake it. For an hour and a half at 280 degrees, and we pull pull them out of the oven when they're done, and the mandrel puller pops them off the mandrel, and we got a blank. How does working here make you feel? Is this a good place to work? What do you think? Actually, it is a great place to work. Yeah, what do you like about it? Uh, I like the people, 
I mean, I love the job. It's the most interesting thing I've ever made. Yeah. So, Pretty fancy fishing rod there. Don't yes, it is. And made in the USA. So yeah, I'm really excited absolutely. about that. Well, great. Thank you for talking to us. All right, thank you. Uh -huh. It was nice meeting you. Mm -hmm. All right, so Matt, we're back up front, kind of. This looks like where things kind of get finished off. Can you talk a little bit about what's happening here? Yeah, absolutely. So this is a lot of craftsmanship that goes into it. And I say that these guys are the best rod builders in the world. So there's a lot of fine little details. And we've got Clayton Cole here who has wrapped and put together thousands, if not tens of thousands of rods in his life. And so I'm going to kind of let him talk a little bit about his experience and, and kind of what goes into the rod assembly process. All right. Yeah. Talk. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, talk about what happens whenever this work comes to you. Okay. okay, so when it actually comes to me, all the guides are put on and lined up by uh, one of our guides, Miss, and that's Jared. Once it gets over to here, I'll wrap it, and each individual one will be wrapped and tied off, and then after it's wrapped, we will we'll straighten it up. And Hunter also is a wrapper, too, as well. So we got one guidesmith for two wrappers. Once we get them all wrapped up, we will throw them over to our final epoxy machine, which each individual guide, label, and handles will be epoxied by hand. So we spend a lot of time per guide. Mm -hmm. Yeah, these are pretty fancy fishing rods. Well, here. we appreciate it. Thank you. We take a lot of pride and do our work that we do. How'd you get started with caching, and how do you like working here? It was kind of funny. I was uh, going over to Murtec for an application uh, next door, and I come in here, and I saw the place was cool, so I got an application here. I uh, started doing the woodworking up front for the showroom, and from then on, they hired me on. I started working grips, then moving over to doing the guides, and then now I'm wrapping and doing the final one. Yeah. Is this a good experience for you? Yeah. Um, you know, it's a lot of hands-on, a lot of technical uh, work, but, you know, I'm used to that. I'm a uh, side carpenter, as I said, that I did with woodworking up front, so I'm not, you know, up for not doing hard work. <laughs> I mean, I'm all yeah. for it. So. Yeah, so great. We appreciate you talking yes, with us. Yes, thank you very much. Right. Thank you for coming in. All right. So, uh, Matt, tell us more about, kind of what your customers feel when they're using a cash and fishing rod you know what what would make it kind of different when we're trying to catch a uh, big bass yeah well this is the part where i geek out on so that you know getting down to the nitty-gritty the the greatest compliment that we get is that fishermen tell us and the feedback is i had to completely get used to fishing a cash and fishing rod it changed the way i fish because I was feeling so much more than I've ever felt before that I was setting the hook on little pebbles, little rocks, you know, just coming over a small stick. And that's where we strive. We want you to be able to feel the difference. So that was, that's absolutely the greatest compliment that we can get are people having to get accustomed to fishing with a cash and fishing rod because the sensitivity is noticeable they're feeling so much more so what brings that about what makes it more sensitive well there again we're getting back to the, mole the molecular level it's all about the details feel everything is about the details I'm a big details guy and it starts from the epoxies that are in the carbon fiber prepreg it starts with how the carbon fiber is functionalized we're, we're using special additives in the epoxy we're working with fibers that are functionalized to help them interact and be stronger in that epoxy matrix. Uh, so then we're rolling our, our blanks. They're moving forward to the uh, downfield rod assembly. And our rods are designed with micro guides, which are small diameter guides. You get a lot more guides on them, which is, it increases your contact points for sensitivity, larger guide, uh, line to guide surface area in contact we formulate our own finish epoxies and rod building epoxy so we can make them with a higher modulus so again they're not dampening vibrations they're just sending those vibrations straight down the blank to your uh, hands and your fingers we also make our own carbon fiber grips which are a hard dense material which again are going to transmit those vibrations they're not going to dampen it like a softer cork or foam so it's a bunch of little small details that we think add up to give you an overall better experience and more sensitive uh, performing fishing rod yeah you were honest about the geekness of all of that weren't you yeah <laughs> so uh, uh, so Matt what made you think about 
designing and building a fishing rod? Well, it really started from the materials and looking at the materials. I kind of always had some ideas about, you know, how the epoxies were working with carbon fiber because that's what I was doing in graduate school. We're making these epoxies that were working with carbon fiber and functionalizing with carbon fiber, making sure that, you know, nothing really bonds to carbon fiber very well. So that's always the tough part is how you make, you know, a composite that's going to stick together very well. So how do you functionalize the fibers? How do they interact with the epoxies? So really that that's where it started from is I absolutely love to fish in undergraduate at East Carolina. I was gone multiple times a week and on the weekends to fishing. So that's, that is absolutely a passion of mine, even though I don't do it as much now, it's still a passion. So starting from that molecular level and thinking, okay, how can I marry what I'm most excited about as my hobby, which is fishing with what I absolutely love to do in the material science aspect of it. Cause I still geek out on the material science like that. That's what I love to do in my business is the development aspect of it. So how could I marry those together? And that's really kind of where it started in the beginning. Just like those ECU people going out fishing instead of studying <laughs> yeah, I know. We probably could study a little bit more, but you got to get real world experience, yeah. Bill. You were planning for the future. That's right. Exactly. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm, I don't live in Sanford, but I can sure speak on behalf of some of the people I know in Sanford. They're really proud to have cash and fishing rods in this city. And, you know, you bring just one more diversified industry to this part of the state. And we were pleased that you took some time out to talk with us about cash and fishing rods today and wish you continued success and growth. Well, Phil, that just means the world. I really appreciate it. We were involved in the Manufacturing Con uh, last year, and we're looking forward to it again this year. And it's just such an exciting opportunity. When you go and you see all the opportunities that North Carolina has, it, it just really gets you excited. And the networking, that has been the thing I've been most uh, appreciative of are the other businesses that are help you problem solve or, okay, have you tried this? Or here's a contact you might point point me to. So for a small company like us, that that's invaluable. And we greatly appreciate the opportunities. What NCMEP offers and NC State, the IES program has just been absolutely phenomenal. Yeah, well, we know we can learn from everybody. And so we appreciate your insights on how, you, how you're growing your business. And thanks again for your help. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you for joining today's Clocking In, Voices of NC Manufacturing. This podcast is brought to you by NC State's College of Engineering, the North Carolina Manufacturing Extension Partnership, and Industry Expansion Solutions. If you'd like to learn more about the solutions NCMEP offers, go to www.ncmep.org. Want to listen to previous Clocking In podcasts? Go to ncmep.org slash clocking in.